Welcome back. We'll be looking today at the volume of solid of revolution around the x-axis. So we will have two functions, and let's go ahead and take a look at them. We will have y equals the square root of x, and y equals x squared. And I've color-coded them so that you can see which one is which here. And here where we have our uh, square root of x one, uh, we'll have a cutoff right there, and we'll clean it up in a second. But what we'll be looking at is the volume that this occupies uh, as this sweeps around the x-axis. Now, we, we won't be asking for the volume that this three-dimensional object could hold in, say, water or something if we were making a glass. What we're looking for is the volume that this sweeps through. So if you needed to have a certain amount of material, how much would you need of that to create this object? Or if you'd rather think of it, think of Archimedes' principle where you dump this object into a barrel of water and see how much it displaces as you push it underwater and it, uh, it completely occupies just the space that it has. Okay, So you could think of it that way. Uh, you do need to be careful with problems like this and be very careful of understanding what the problem is so that you solve it correctly. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and let the computer uh, do something for us so that we can see what, what happens. Um, I'll go ahead and put this in motion. It could help you understand what it is that we're doing. And I'll turn off these axes here so you can look at just the object that we're creating. You could see that, uh, sure, this has material if we were going to make this physically, uh, and then it could hold something. But you can see that there are different questions. Obviously, the, the hollowed out part there, you could use it to pour in some water if you held it properly, um, but that wouldn't necessarily be the volume of the material used to make the glass. That's the difference here. So let's go ahead and look at that and see what we need to do to solve this. And let's bring out our volume equation for these. And you can see that we have up here, we have our uh, f of x, and then here is our g of x, okay, just like we had before. And I'll go ahead and color code these, and then you can see what's what. Do you remember I had the first one, I had the purple there was going to be the y equals the square root of x, and then the yellow was the x squared. But look up here, remember that it's the equivalent of having a like a, this disk where you have the volume of each individual little disk is going to be like pi r squared h, and that's going to be our uh, thickness there, okay? So we need to square that because the f of x and g of x are the r squared, if you want to think of it in those kind of terms. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at these here. Um, we need to clean it up first. Uh, you can see that it would be kind of a mess to take the antiderivative of those. So let's fix that and that, OK? And that's kind of easy to do at this point in the game. Uh, and then with this here, we will uh, take the antiderivative. And you remember from earlier, our borders will be 0 and 1, because we wanted the place where they, where they met there, and only interested in that part as it sweeps around. OK, so this is going to be really kind of, kind of easy. So let's take the antiderivative there and see what we get. And at this point, the antiderivative of x should be very simple to you, as should that. So I don't need to spend much time on explaining this. Now the only thing we need to do is analyze it from 1 to 0. And when we do that, I'll go ahead and put them up there, you'll see that this is the part for when it's 1, right there. And then this is the part for when it's 0. And we like this zero one because that just goes away. That whole thing is just zero minus zero is zero times pi is zero. So a whole part of our equation just goes away. And when that 
cleans up, you end up with this nice little thing. And this is not specified any units. If it had specified in cubic centimeters or cubic meters or something, then we would do that. In this case, it's just volume units, whatever arbitrary thing that happens to be for you. So uh, the, the important thing is just to remember that we were dealing with the, the solid of the revolution and not this inside hollow part. Okay, keep those distinct uh, and just, just try to remember and, and read the problem more than once so that you understand, okay, we're doing this contra that or just keep it straight in your mind. So, okay, hope that helps. See you next time.